it is what it is. So let's continue with equilibrium, equilibrium of rigid bodies, right? That's the topic in hand. I'm gonna talk a little bit about this this uh, this topic here, bodies under two and three forces. Um, bodies under two forces is, is, is very useful. Um, bodies under three forces, I, I think it's useful when you have a real weird problem, those problems that uh, like uh, teachers like to give the students just to give them a hard time, but not, not so useful in, in regular problems, I think. Uh, usually those problems can be solved just by applying the three equations of equilibrium really easy. But let me tell you what I want to tell you about this uh, really quickly here because we need to do examples, examples, examples. I cannot do examples of every possibility that you can find in this topic because it's infinity. But I'll give you, uh, I hope, hopefully three, at least four, I gave you a couple last class and I give you suggested problems in, in the canvas. You have suggested go over those problems, they are solved. Um, I don't like in those problems uh, uh, that the, the answer they don't put the little arrow that I like to put in the answers that I, I, I say like the answer RA equals three newtons this direction. That little arrow is really important to tell in what direction is the solution, right? Or when I find a, a, a result like moment at B equals three newtons meter in this direction. It's very important, very important because that's part of the solution. What is the direction of the, of the result that you found? It's really important. It's different if the solution is in one direction or if it's goes in the other. In the book, they don't put the direction on the, on the answer and the final answer. Um, but take a look at those problems in the book because, well, I cannot give you examples of everything. So you have so more, more, uh, more examples to, to help you understand these concepts. This matter about bodies under two forces, imagine this is a body, anybody. If a body has forces, applied only in two points. Let's say this body has forces only in two points. Let's say that it has some forces here, some other for and some other forces here. Every time you have forces on one point, you can add all those forces and get a final result. And right, I can add these three forces um, by the method of uh, any method. Rectangular components is the best one or something. You can you can always find Let's say one force over here. Let's put it in. Let's say this is the, the this is let's say this is F1, F2, F3. So this is the uh, F result, resultant of all the Fs here. And I add this, let's say this is P1, P2, this is RP. And I can draw this line here. I can move and I have this other line here. So I can move, remember that I can, in this kind of uh, problems, in this class, the forces can be moved along the line of action with no problem, right? We don't have to pay any, any taxes or anything. You can slide, slide the force through the line. So you can move this force here. This will be RP. And you could move the other one here, RF. And then I can add these two by the parallelogram method. And I will end up with one resultant of those two. This will be the total result, right? If this body is in equilibrium, this resultant has to be zero, right? This resultant has to be zero. So how can this resultant be zero? The only way that resultant has, uh, can be zero is that um, these two forces have the same direction. So there is no, 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 no rectangle like this.
that there is there is uh, 180 degrees here, so so this shrinks and it's zero. I don't know if you guys see that. Let me how can I explain that? Um, if I have this one of the points here, the other, and and the, and this is the line that connects the two points. If this is one of the forces, and this is the other force. When I connect those forces here in one point, well, the, the rectangle is, is flat, see? This, this, <coughs> this, this parallelogram here, here is flat, right? There is no diagonal, see? For the if, 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 if I move this like, like this, so, so I'm, I'm sinking the parallelogram by putting this, these two lines like here, so the parallelogram is like that. I don't know if I am making a, a mess with that. Um, the only way, the only way these, these two forces can add up to zero is, is if they are in the same line and they have the same money. So one balances the other and the summation is zero, right? If there is an angle, if there is any angle, any angle that you put in here, then you're gonna have a resultant here, right? If there is an angle like this, then when you put this force here and this one here, you're gonna have a resultant that is different, to, different from zero. The only way for this to be zero is that this angle is 180, right? You see it? If there is an angle that is less than 180, you will have a parallelogram and you will have a diagonal that has a, a certain magnitude. Whatever it is, is not zero. The only way for this to be zero is that this angle is 180, right? When this angle is 180, you have this situation, right? You see how if this angle is 180, this is the situation. And the, your, your parallelogram will be here, like flat and the resultant will be a zero <coughs> vector here, so the, the resultant is zero. Provided that this is equal to this, right? But the point that I'm making, more than that, than both of them are equal to zero. They have to be zero to be in equilibrium, but then the condition that I am trying to, to express is the fact that these two forces have to be on the same line. So, you cannot have these forces like this. The, if you draw a line through the two points, the two forces have to go to that line. Let me put it here. If you have this body here, and you draw a line through those two forces, something like this, then, one of the forces has to go over here and the other has to be over here. Because only in that case, those two forces can be balanced, can, can balance each other to produce a zero resultant. If there is any angle, you're not gonna have zero. You're gonna have this situation and you're gonna have a resultant different from zero. No matter what the magnitude of the forces, there will be a resultant different from zero. So you need to have the forces in the same line for equilibrium. And then uh, the other condition is that those forces have to be equal. If these forces are equal, these forces have to be equal for equilibrium. This force has to be equal to this one and they have to be in the opposite direction, either in tension or in compression. So, the, the, the conclusion, if you have a body with just two forces, they have to be under the same line. They have to be collinear and of the same magnitude. Remember that. Really, that's the, 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 the important uh, fact that you have to understand for bodies under two forces. Understood? And what is there now? There is no equilibrium. So that body is not in equilibrium. If they tell you the body is in equilibrium and it has only two forces, you for, for sure know that those two forces are equal 
under the same line. So they, they, that's, that's an easy conclusion. When you have a body like that, oh, it's very easy. They tell you this, uh, this body has two forces. This force is three newtons. This force has to be three newtons too, and the direction of those forces have to be under this line. You know it because the body is in equilibrium. You know. Automatically, you can say that. Hmm? So, the tire is in equilibrium? We only work equilibrium in this class. The, if you want something moving, you go to the dynamics class next door. No, this is, no thank you. <laughs> That's a friend of mine in, in, in the PhD program. He used to say, I choose civil engineering because in civil engineering, uh, summation of forces is equal to zero. Everything is in equilibrium, nothing moves. You want everything to be uh, still, not moving. Well, that's not the case anymore now. You study dynamics in civil engineering, like uh, all, all my PhD was in dynamics. Everything, everything was dynamics. Not anymore. Question? Something? No. Okay, that's bodies under two forces. You know that those two forces are equal and they have to be collinear. So I'm going to do an example like that here. Here. Uh, he, he, if you're going to analyze this body, uh, a kind of complicated body, right? It's actually two bodies. If you see, there are two bodies here. This, this structure is made of two elements here. And if you count, if, if you make a free body diagram of the whole thing just without the supports, because it's, it's asking you what are the reactions at support B and support C, how many, how many forces do you see in this support? How many forces? If you make a free body diagram of this, the whole structure, let me try to do it here. If you do, that will be like this. Remember, when you do a free body diagram, you don't need to put the, 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 the thickness of the elements. It's usually we neglect that thickness. Um, Unless the, the, the thickness is important and there are some dimensions that uh, um, impact the location of the forces. So here you have a force of 50 pounds. And um, what forces do I put here on, on point B? What forces do you put, you, do you put in point B? What kind of support is this one? Can this, can this move horizontally? No. No, so there should be an horizontal force here. Can this move vertically? No. No, there must be a vertical force here. Uh, can this rotate? Yes. yes. Yeah, it's a pin, so it can rotate freely, so there is no moment. Okay, easy. And same thing for the other one, right? Same thing here. Same thing. So you do... Left or right? Doesn't matter. That's okay. Remember, if you don't know, just put anything you want. You never, you never waste time thinking, okay, this is to the left or to the right. Just any direction, because what happened? When you solve that unknown, you will get a plus or minus. If the solution is negative, it means that the force was on the other direction. You assume this to the right, and if you get a minus sign, then you know that this is to the left. Same for the vertical. For everything, even for moments, if you assume in one direction, you get a negative. Suppose you assume clockwise, you get a negative value, then it's counterclockwise. So, can you solve this problem? Can you solve this problem? You cannot solve this problem because you have four unknowns, right? And we only have three equations, so this problem cannot be solved, right? See? Okay, let's go to the next problem. Well, what you have to do is you have to break this, analyze these two structures se separated. So you, you will do, let's erase this one right here. Um, let me break this here. And then I analyze them separately. Let's put this one here. Now I have 
there will be some forces here that interaction between those two, right? Right? So this body is a body with forces on two points, this point and this point. So you can add all these forces together and obtain just one force. And uh, I, I don't know what forces are here, but whatever it is, there will be one, one resultant here. And I know that it's a, for, it's a body under two forces. So this force here has to be equal and the same uh, uh, line of action of this force here. So the situation is like this. I can remove those two and replace that by one. So I'm going to put here a little line in this direction here. You see, I draw, I draw a line connecting the two points where the forces are applied. So now I know that there will be a force here. And I can put it in any direction because it's a, an unknown, right? But I know if I put this force, I know that in the other end has to be equal and the opposite side, right? A body and the two forces, they have to be following the same line and the same value but opposite direction, opposite sense. So I should have another force here. And if I call this force reaction at C, this is going to be the same, exact same force in the opposite direction. So the magnitude is going to be also reaction at C. This value has to be equal to this value. The force that I have here is going to be the same force that is in here, but with the opposite direction. Yes? So how did you know that was where the other uh, R of C was? What? what? Like, how did you know that's the point where it's like an e where it creates an equilibrium? One, one force is here because it's the, 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 the support is applying the force here, right? Mm -hmm. That is shown by this three value diagram where I remove the support and I put the force that the support exerts on the, on the body, right? Mm -hmm. This is the force that the, the ceiling here is applying on this L-shaped bar, right? Now, here I erase this element. See this, this, see, see this free body diagram? How I get this free body diagram? By erasing the support and erasing this. You see, it's not here, right? Oh, so okay. at the point where this element touches this one, so meaning in this point, I have to put one force, which is the force that this applies on this guy. Oh, so you have a force applied here by the support and a force applied here, here by this guy. Mm -hmm. okay. So you have two forces. What is the direction of the forces? Well, since they have to be collinear, well, you draw this line connecting the two points and the forces have to go in this direction and in this direction and they have to be the same magnitude. So this is an equilibrium. All right? Is that understood? It could it also be pointing in? Yes, yes. The same question that you did here. You so can put it any direction you want. And at the end, we get that this is minus 40 pounds. Oh, it's in the other direction. Yeah, but uh, both of these arrows pointing inward would be correct as well. Right, 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 right. You can, you can assume this. You, you, these are unknowns. These are unknowns. These are your unknowns for this problem. This one, this one, and this one. So three unknowns, see? One, two, three. Uh, this is not an unknown because when you have this one, you have this one. It's not an unknown. It's the same, the same value. If you get this value to be negative, means that this force is point in, inward. Right? If you get this value to be negative. All right? Actually, uh, I don't remember if that, if that force is going to be... In what direction do you think that force goes? No, like that? In the other direction? Let's, let's, let's say, let's say, just, just... We don't know, we don't know, right? But so we can assume anything. Let's do it like that. Let's assume that force is in this direction. And let's assume that this, so this one has to be like that, right? If you assume this one going in that direction, you can, you have to put this one in the other. You cannot put this in one direction and this one in the same direction because that, was, that wouldn't be equilibrium, right? And this is, these two are not two unknowns. These are just one unknown, so you have to be consistent. This, if this unknown is going in, this one has to be going in for the equilibrium of this body, 
right? Because they are the same and now. If you put it in the other direction, you are assuming that they are different and nouns. Is that clear? So let's assume that, right? Now, if you assume that this force is going in this direction, then we have to put that force here in the opposite direction because those are the same force, right? It's just action-reaction, right? You have to, you have to put that force like this. Right? Yeah, you're right. That, that force is in that direction. I wanted to put it in the opposite direction to see that we got a negative sign. Yeah, it, it, yeah I see that it's in that direction. You know why? Because if you imagine, imagine uh, analyzing the rotation of this body around this point, this force is pulling down, so it's going to rotate like this, right? The only way this doesn't rotate is this goes in this direction, so it tries to rotate, so those two rotations balance each other, and this is in equilibrium, right? That's how I know that this is the correct direction for that. But we don't know. It's only if you analyze the fact, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make to get a negative sign there. Let's put it in the opposite direction. That's why I'm telling you that you have to have a very good eraser. And you have to draw in pencil. So I'm gonna assume this direction. You see why, right? Remember, we don't know, we just assuming. But I am, I, am, I am assuming this direction so we get a negative sign in, this, in the solution, right? Just to show you that you get a negative sign. If you assume the wrong direction, you will get a negative sign. So if this goes in this direction, this goes in this direction, agree? Because these two are action-reaction. What, what uh, Newton's law is that one, action-reaction? First law. Second one? Third one? Second is not. <laughs> I, I confuse a little first and third. Well, it's one of the basic Newton's laws. Action, reaction. If this force applies on this force, uh, if this guy applies on this guy, this force, this guy applies on this guy, this force, and those two forces are equal, the same magnitude, but opposite sense, right? That's action reaction, right? You probably maybe you remember the, the right phrasing of that law in one body it says I, I I cannot do it in English just by heart. Se la puedo decir en español. Si un cuerpo aplica una fuerza sobre el otro, este aplica sobre el primero una fuerza igual y de sentido contrario, right? In in, in Spanish it's so easy. Can somebody say it in English? So, the only thing that changes is the sign. The sign in, in, in action reaction by the, the the Newton law, right? Action reaction. If this force applies on this, a force in this direction, this guy applies on this uh, one equal force in the same magnitude, the same direction, but the opposite sense. So now that we know, we know that these forces have the same direction. Opposite sense, but same direction, and it's the direction of a line that goes through these two points. That's the only way these two loads can go in the same direction. It's because there is a line that goes through through the points like that, right? So now we know also this angle, right? This angle is given by these numbers, right? So what is that angle? That angle will be, that alpha will be tangent minus one of um, three over five, right? Three over five equals, anybody has the arctangent of three over five? Or another way if you want is just to get what is the distance from C to D. That's another way to do it. I, sometimes that is kind of better. CD is equal to a square root of five squared plus three squared, so it will be a square root of 25 plus nine, <coughs> so a square root of um, 34. Yeah. So what, what do you get? Square root of 34. 
is square root of 34, 5.83, 5.83, 5.83 is 0, nice, 3, 3, 1, 3, 1. 1.33095183831. Okay. So if we have this value here, 5.831, then this is 3, this is 5. We can express sine and cosine, sine and cosine of this angle as, uh, as a function of those three numbers instead of dealing with angles. I hate angles. Okay. So now we know that this is a force that we are going to call. RC, this angle is alpha, which has this, these properties, 3, 5, 5.8. And we can analyze this free body diagram with three unknowns. So we can do, what, what would you do here? Summation of, summation of, um, we, we can do summation of forces in the x direction, summation of forces in the y direction, or summation of forces in, of moments about one point. And remember, oh, we haven't finished this diagram. This diagram needs labels here. Let's put some labels. Let's call it uh, by and bx. And this one is already known rc. And maybe it's a good idea to put some dimensions here so that our diagram is, is better. So you put here uh, three inches. And uh, this is seven. Uh, all the way to there is seven, right? Yeah. Seven inches all the way to here. And this distance here is 1.5. 1.5 inches. I guess that's enough. That will be a good three body diagram. So now we can start. Uh, so what I recommend here, you know what? I have this and now, this and now, this and now. If I do summation of moments at this point, I eliminate two unknowns from my equation. I have an equation on one unknown and I can solve it directly. Remember that I'm lazy and I don't like simultaneous equations. If I get simultaneous equation, I do it in my, com in, my, in my cell phone. So what I do here, the best way here will be summation of moments about point B. It has to be equal to zero because this is equilibrium. And uh, what do you want positive in what direction? Counterclockwise. Hmm? Counterclockwise. I will do that too. Well, I guess it doesn't matter here. Yeah, it doesn't matter because I have both announced in both directions, but let's do it counterclockwise as a, as a request from the audience. So, so what, what moments are we going to do here? The moment of this force, right? Positive because it's counterclockwise, right? 15 times 3, that's the distance to point B. 50 times 3. Any other force that produces moment with respect to point B? RC. This one. But the best way is to get components, right? That's the best way. So I'm going to put the components here in green. So I will have this component that will be RC X, RC Y. And this component that will be RC X. So that component will be, let's do first RC X is negative, right? RCX produces a moment that is negative. It's RCX, which is, which is, is negative, is RC multiplied by what? By 5 over 5.831. 5.831. Uh, actually, uh, it looks like I'm not using five significant digits. I, I am. Because this number is 5.83095. So if I do it in, in, with 5, this is 5.8310. Should put the zero, but I don't want to write so many numbers in my. Remember, five significant digits on intermediate numbers. Remember, I'm going to put it here for now, but. Multiply by what distance? 1.5 uh, This is RCX, right? Yes. 
multiplied by 1.5. Everybody has that thing clear? Everybody? No? Uh, how did you know that the RCX was negative? Because I feel like if you push against in that way, it will... This one? This one? Yeah. It's, it's just the component of this one. This is the one that I assume. I come from this analysis here. I put RC here. Well, I was just wondering how you know that it, like, RCX was in, or would make the in that diagram direction? go, yeah, clockwise. How did you know that? Oh, no. Uh, is, is it clear why this one is going to the left? Because it's just a component of this one, right? Oh, okay. So then RCY would also be negative. It's gonna be it's gonna be going up, right? It's clear that it's going up, right? You you, you get that by by drawing these little parallels here. You this do this parallel here. Yeah. And this parallel here, and that generates the components. Now, why this produces this negative? Is your question? Because we have positive counterclockwise. Now this force is going in this direction, so at around point B is going to rotate like this, right? Which is clockwise, opposite to this, so that's why it's negative. Is that your question? Yeah, okay, thank you. Right? Now this one is going up, so what there will be the, the sign here for this force? I'm gonna put that force now here. Positive or negative? Positive. Positive because it goes like this around point B. Counterclockwise, so counterclockwise, positive, all right? Got it? Yes. Then this will be RC times 3 over 5.8310 multiplied by what distance? 7. Hmm? Seven. Everybody has cleared that seven? Everybody clear the seven? Or, or the rest? Uh, everybody is sleeping already? Yeah. Now, any more forces producing moment at point B? This one doesn't produce because it's time zero. This one doesn't produce moment because it goes through the point. So it's just these forces have to be equal to zero if we want this to be in equilibrium. Equal to zero. So, RC, so I have to do here RC uh, times, um, let us do operations, it will be 5 over 5.831 times 1.5, so I have maybe 1, let's do it like this, 1.2862 minus, and I have 50.3 here, and I have plus 3 times 7 is 21 divided by 5.831, this is 3.6, 3.6014 RC, oh, oh, no, it's 50 times 3, right? Yes, 150, yes, 150, so we can do here RC, RC is equal to in case of number 40, minus 1.2862 plus 3.6014, uh, right? Equals to minus 150, right? So what is that? 3.6 minus 1.2862 equals 2 point. So that would be RC equals to minus 150 over 2.3152 equals to minus 150. So that's my answer, 64.78. Anybody has get those numbers? Anybody checking? I may make a mistake. I, I'm not doing this twice. But I, if, if I work in by myself, I do this two, three, four times to make sure it's correct. But I'm trusting that you guys are checking my operations. See, I got negative RC. Didn't I, didn't I tell you? I told you. See, I told you. You didn't believe me, right? What does that mean? That this force was assumed in the wrong direction. Right? It's really going, this way. It's really going the other way. So you can do this. You can, what do you do? What did I tell you to do? You make a, a little cross sign here and then you put something like this to show that it's actually in the other direction, okay? And if you go back to the original diagram here, you can do also another crossing here and this one is in this direction, right? And then this one, you know that this force also is not that way, but this way. So this is RC. And the magnitude of RC, the magnitude of RC is 64.8. 64.8. I don't put the sign here because this sign is just for here, for my equation. This sign... I don't need sign because I'm showing the direction. This force is 64.8 going towards that, right? That's the force 
that the, 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 um, the support is applied on this element here. Or, or back to the original thing, that's the force that this support is applied on the element here. Okay? So if they ask me, what is the force here? Find, find the reaction at point C. The reaction at point C is this one right here. I will have to put it here. If, if, that, if I want to write the answer, I say RC equals 64.8 pounds going in this direction. That will be the, res the result for just that force. Is it clear where is the, that direction going? Yes, it's perfectly clear because I put the arrow showing in what direction goes that. I'm not, I'm not saying the angle, right? Okay, make sense? Make sense? Now, we need the other two. You need a picture. You have to tell me so I need to. Okay. And then here, I'm, I'm putting these notes on the on Canvas. Have you seen from the previous classes? I've been putting nothing. Good. Okay, let's continue. Now we need to find the x and the y. What would you do for the x and the y? Well, you can do summation of forces in the x and y direction, right? You have this one already, 64.8. So yeah, you now find these two. So you can do like this. We can put the value here, 64.788788. Hmm? And here, you can do two things. Uh, um, let's do summation of forces. But uh, you have to be very careful here. Summation of forces in the x direction. If you already made the correction here, this is the new direction of 60 of the RC. This is the correct. And you're gonna do this force, this equation, after you do this correction, then you don't have to put the sign. This is the direction, yeah, corrected and the value. Now that you have this value, this is not an unknown anymore. So you can use it here, the way it is on your diagram, or you can do it, you can do it, in, ignore this, use the original direction that you had in the diagram, but you have to put the sign, right? This sign is while you have this in the original. Anyway, it's going to be the same sign in the equation, look. So, summation of forces in the x direction, let's do positive to the right colon so let's put uh, bx going to the right is is uh, positive right put positive in this direction now i have to put this force and this force goes to the right right that will be positive too so will be positive um 64.788 times 5 over over 5.831, right? Equals to zero, right? And, and what I use here, I use the fact that this force is going to the right, so that's why I put positive, right? Uh, now imagine that I'm going to use the, the red, the original, the original force. How will be the equation? Would be bx because it's going to the right. Bx is going to the right, so positive. And now this red is going to the left, so it's negative, right? It's negative, right? It's negative, negative. But this going to the left being negative is this value minus 64, so it's minus. 64.788, right? So you have the min minus times minus is plus. So in any way you get the same value, okay? What you can never do is use this direction and use the negative because this negative belongs to this red arrow. 
Make sense? Be very consistent with that. Okay, so anyway, it's the same, so I'm going to erase this. And from here, you get that bx is equal to what? bx is equal to what? 64.788 times 5 divided by 5.831 equals 55.55. Five, five. Oh. five, five, five pounds. That's BX. And for for the Y, same same comment. Same. Uh, I'm gonna put positive going up. So I have B Y. Uh, I'm gonna use the whatever, right? Whatever. This is positive, but it has a negative, so it's actually negative, right? Uh, uh, no, positive going up. So it's, it's positive, but then it's <coughs> negative, so it's negative. Or if I use this one, it's maybe it's less confusing. This one is going down, that's so the, yes, the 64, so going down is negative. Negative 64.7. 788 times 3 over 5.831. Uh, any more forces in the y direction? Any more forces in the y direction? The 50 going down, so negative. Minus 50 equals to 0. So py equals to what? 33 negative. So it's, oh, this is negative and this is negative, so it has to be, the whole thing has to be positive, right? <coughs> you get 83, anybody get 83.33? All right, and positive because those two numbers are negative, go to the other side positive. So BY, BY equals 33. 0.333 pounds. Okay, so I get positive and positive. So those forces are in the correct direction. So my final result should be here. Well, you know what? Let's leave it like that because we. I want to do at least another example. Okay, you can put those values into a little nice red square. Um, I had this problem here, but I'm not gonna do it. It's, it's in the video. I just wanted to show you that if you analyze the beam, if you analyze the beam, The free body diagram will be this, this, um, this cable going in that direction. This, let's, let's exaggerate on this a little bit. So, the, the weight over here, and there is another force here. This diagram of this beam is a body under three forces. Oh, I forgot what I said about <coughs> three forces. Oh, I didn't talk about three forces. This is a body under three forces. That was the other topic I was going to do here. Three forces. And I don't want to pay much attention to that topic because it's not very useful for you guys for regular problems. But if there is another force here, if if I make if I find the place where these two forces meet, the, the line of action of those two forces, listen, this is one, this is one line of action, and this is another line of action.
I can slide that forces over here. Let me slide this one here, right? And then slide this one right here. This force has to go through that point. How shall I put that point? This force have to go through that point. Right? Because if you add these two forces, the green ones, if you add those, you're going to get the resultant here, like this. And the only way to balance this force is to have another force here in the same direction through the same line and the same magnitude in order to cancel that one and keep the equilibrium of the body, right? Right? So that gives you a, 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 a geometry here that you can analyze using the, cos the cosine law and the sine law, which is really a pain on the neck, right? <laughs> um, and that gives you the... Yeah, some, some elements here, you can do the geometry of that to solve that problem by getting the fact that <coughs> when you have a body under three forces, the three forces have to meet at a point. See, these two, this one and this one, meet here. This one has to meet at the same point here because when you add these two, you end up with a, a body under two forces, this one and this one. And if you have a body under two forces, those forces have to be and the, uh, collinear and they have to be the same magnitude, right? So you find this point like that and you can do the geometry of those based on the dimensions of this stuff, right? And there will be some, there, you will get a triangle there that you can solve using the cosine law and the size law. But just, just keep that in your head, eventually it might help you to solve a really complicated problem. But this problem is, is you can solve this problem much easier if you have the tension here. Here you have one force, another force, and the way this is given, right, 50 kilograms. So you have CX, CY, CX, I'm uh, uh, sorry, sorry, tension, tension. This tension is, is, you know the direction of this tension, it's just the tension of the cable. You can call it this TCD. You have one force here, you can call it BY. You can call this one BX. And you see summation of moments about this point, you can find T, the same as we did the previous problem. Moments about this point give you this one. By getting the components of this, pro, of this force like this and like that, and you have all the dimensions, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, and this distance, um, whatever it is, well, well you, have, you have this angle, you have this distance here, so you can find this distance. It's a, 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 a few calculations there. And then you have the moment about this point to find this force. And then summation of forces in the X direction, summation of forces in the <coughs> this, instead of doing this crazy stuff, right? But that's another, another condition. Bodies under three forces, all the forces have to meet at one point. And that can give you a clue to solve, um, to solve some other problems that are really difficult. I remember a problem that is, was really nice to, to analyze, but it's just a, a, like, like a game, no, 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 not really practical to find what, il, what is the angle here. If this is, a, this is a, a smooth surface, what is the, the position of that too long? What is the position of this? If you know like the length of this is like two hours or something, so you have a reaction here, the weight here, and another reaction here, and so you know that these three forces have to be meet at the same point because it's a, it's a body, this bar is a body under three forces, so the three forces have to meet there. But it's not practical problems for a, for a student in studying statics. So let's just, if you are more interested in talking about that topic the, in the video that is in Canvas right now, not the one in this class. I'm going to probably put this video also next to that one. But I solved this problem 
this problem in that video using the concept of three forces applied on a body um, and doing all the triangle analysis and stuff. Uh, I, I'm getting I'm getting to the conclusion that no very practical problem. Let's do this problem. So you have that construction there. You need to find the force on the cable and the reactions here, right? Um, there is a, a force P of 280 pounds over there. So I'm going to do the diagram here, the free body diagram. That's the free body diagram. You see it? You for, forget about this completely because this support doesn't touch my, my structure here. This doesn't touch this, so doesn't, there's no forces that this guy applies on this. The cable is applying the force here. So this is the force that the cable applies on this guy. And the cable touches this here. And since I erase the cable, I put the force that the element that I erase at the point of contact. So that's this force. I erase the support, so I put the forces that the support applies on my diagram at the point of contact, right? So this one doesn't touch my element here, so no, no forces do to this. I don't want to see some force over here and some, some force over here or something. <laughs> no, 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 because this doesn't touch this. All right, uh-huh. Does, does the force on D go to R C? Yes, because it's a cable that goes through the pulley, and we know that when you have a pulley, the force on both sides of the pulley are the same. Okay. So you can give the same name. Let's call it, I would call it T, and T, tension. Or you can call it T, C, D, E, or something. T for tension on the cable. And then this will be A, X and a y now you put some dimensions here you know that this distance is uh, five <coughs> meters this one is 12 in inches inches no meters inches inches uh, 12 inches this is 12 inches too this is this is a is three inches so this is three three little inches right there and then what <coughs> what would you do what equation would you do first summation of what forces in the y. I don't do forces in the y because I have one unknown and two unknowns this one has components on the y right I hate equations with more than one unknown right you know that I hate that if I do moments about this point, I eliminate two unknowns and I only get one unknown for my equation, right? So that's the way I will go. I will, sometimes you cannot do it, but if I can get an equation with just one unknown, that's what I do because it's much easier to solve. Summation of moments about point A equals to zero, and I'm going to do, it doesn't matter positive what way because I have one moment in one direction and another moment in the other direction, so doesn't matter. So I'm going to do positive counterclockwise. And I'm going to need this angle. I'm going to need the angle of this force in order to get the components of that force, right? So I need that angle. I'm going to get that angle, so I'm going to need this angle here. This angle, <coughs> let's call it alpha. So uh, alpha tangent minus 1 of this distance, what is this distance? It's going to be 12 minus 5, right? 7 over 24. Anybody has the arctangent of 7 over 24? Arctangent of 7 over 24. 16.260. Okay. <coughs> okay, great. So now who we'll do the summation of moments about point A equals to zero. Mm. Summation of moments about point A equals to zero. 
column. Uh, this this t is positive, so it will be t times twelve, right? Yes. T times twelve. T times twelve. Now summation of uh, I'm, I am doing moments about point A. So T times twelve. Now the components of T. Let's do T Tx first. That will be um, minus, right? Will be T sine of alpha, sine of sixteen twenty six times what distance? I'm doing the x first, right? I'm doing the, the horizontal component, so it will be also 12, right? 12 times 12. Now I'm going to do the vertical component, the vertical component here. So it will be t cosine alpha, t is a minus. cosine 16.26 is going to do moment like this. Yes, negative negative 2 times what distance what distance you get there <coughs> I'm, I'm doing the the, the the vertical right what is the distance from this force to this point five eight, eight. eight right five plus three oh. right yeah I'm talking about this vertical component here so the distance is all this distance. So we say 8 times 8. Any more forces with respect to point A? That produce moment with respect to the 2A. And it's negative. Minus 280 times what? 3. 3, right? No more forces equal to 0. So you have to solve... Solve for t. Oh, I have three. I, oh, I have two. Three t's? Oh, yeah, three t's. One, two, and three. Right. Three t's. There is the other component here. So I have to do t <coughs> 12 minus sine of sine of 16.6 times 12. 3.35 this, this is minus cosine of Cosine of 16.26 times 8, 7.68, minus, oh no, oh no, 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 equals to 20 times 3, positive, right, 8, 4, 0. So from here we get that t is equal to 8, 4, 0, divided by 12, minus 36, <coughs> minus 7.68, equals to 0 0.96. So, 8, 40, divided by answer equals 8.75. Anybody got that? Anybody got that? Tension. 875 uh, newtons, pounds, well, whatever, pounds. The rest you can do it. The summation of forces in the x direction, this one is basically equal t and the horizontal t, and the y is 280, the vertical t, and zero here, right? You can do the rest, right? I can I can put the solution in canvas side. Just what is what is left is so easy, right? The, I don't know. Let's, we have like one minute. Yeah. Summation of forces in the x direction equals to zero. I will do positive going to the right, and I will say a x uh, plus t a hundred and seventy six. I'm doing this t plus the other t that is also going to the right, so it's also positive, plus 876 sine of alpha equals to zero, right? Well, I based in, instead of sine of alpha, I should put sine of uh, 1626 equals to zero, so ax equals minus yeah gives you minus because both are positive 
but they will go to the other side as negatives. So that is in the opposite sense because I assume it to the right, so it's actually to the left because I got the minus sign. And then summation of forces in the y direction equals to zero. I'm gonna do positive going up. So ay minus 280 and minus t a75 cosine 1626 equals to zero if from here you should get you should get one one two zero <coughs> I get positive one one two no one one two zero oh sorry 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 oh one one two zero two oh that's so weird one one two zero going positive so going up oh both are the same magnitude that's that's funny Okay. Okay. Please look at the at the recommended examples because we don't have time in class to do many examples. Okay. I put several. And if you have any questions, so when while you do your homework, give me a text and we do a little zoom. Please, we don't do attendance today. No time. All right. Have fun. Nothing that's good. Oh, I didn't have